Welcome to Therese Talk. I'm your host, Therese May. Thanks for joining me on this journey through faith and fun and family and all kinds of other stuff. Let's get started. Your value comes from within. It comes from inside. Your value comes from who you are in Christ. It comes from, um, you know, we're, we're always telling the girls, You're beautiful because of who you are inside. And it's because you're kind. It's because you're selfless. And we literally probably repeat some of these things to them at least weekly to be just constantly reminding them, find your value in in people, find your value in who you are as a person. And most of all, most importantly, find your value in Christ and, you know, put your identity in him. That is Esther Anderson. You might recognize her voice from her online viral videos in just a bit. She's going to share more about raising girls in this crazy social media obsessed world. Well, by now, a lot of the online chatter about the Super Bowl halftime show has died down, and that's good, right? I'm going to be honest. At first, I was really mad. And then there was just kind of this sinking feeling in my stomach. And then my heart hurt. Now, I know I shouldn't have been surprised. These are two worldly singers performing at a worldly game. What really bothered me is that it was done in the name of female empowerment. Now, I'm a woman. (laughs) I know you know that. I'm all about empowerment. Now, that doesn't mean that I believe that women are better than men. It means that I believe that women, just like men, should be afforded every opportunity to live to the maximum of their God-given gifts. God is the one who gives talent, right? I mean, that's good stuff. And good things come from the Lord, the ability to dance, incredible voices. God also created our sexuality, though, and for a very specific purpose purpose. The way I saw all of that displayed on national TV just left me feeling, I don't know, kind of shaken. It made me feel like women were just objects, or at least that's how they were being portrayed, not wonderfully created beings. And I think that's what God had in mind. You see, God loves women, and that's not meant to be an inflammatory statement of any way, shape, or form. He just was not satisfied with creation until he created humans. He made Adam or Adam, and then he removed a rib to make Eve. She was created with flesh, not from earth like Adam was. Women are by God's hand more tender than men. There's something distinctively different about us, and I think that's a good thing. Now, we are not without our flaws. Okay, there's Rahab. She had a crazy checkered past. I mean, anybody would look at her and be like, no way, no how. But God chose to use her in the lineage of Jesus, right? That's insane. Uh, Then there's Mary. Now, God could have sent Jesus to earth in any number of miraculous ways, but he chose to use a woman. And then after the resurrection, women were the first to hear from the angel about that miracle. So God doesn't see women as lesser beings, and neither should we. I guess my biggest disappointment with that Super Bowl performance is that it has the possibility the opportunity to affect a generation, to influence our culture. I don't think that's the kind of thing that does any favors for women or anyone for that matter. It portrays us as so much less than we could be, so much less than what God made us for. So a friend of mine sent me some online codes for a meal prep service, and it ended up being barely anything to get a few meals. So I was like, all right, I'll do this. Now, it all comes in a box, you know, with ice packs and everything, and everything's all portioned out. The first meal was stuffed peppers. Now, I already know how to make stuffed peppers, but I was really excited to try the recipe. They had some seasonings that I would have never thought of. And then a cool tip, okay, like if you use a cast iron pan to make your stuffed pepper filling, Fill the peppers and put them right back in that cast iron pan and pop them in the oven. Hello, less dishes. I'm all about less dishes, right? Okay, another meal was a pork loin that was topped with this incredible cream sauce. Now, it was really simple to make. Basically, you deglaze the pan with some broth, and then you add sour cream and some Dijon mustard and then fresh dill incredible. You could put this on pork. You could put it on chicken. You could put it on fish. Now, the last meal, because I got three of them, uh, was a pasta with kale. And I didn't cook it right away. So by the time I opened it, the kale, no good. So I did what a lot of people do with kale. 
I just threw it out. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm really the kind who's cut out for meal kits. For one, they're a little more expensive than I could justify. I just kept thinking, okay, at the grocery store, this would have only cost me this much. Uh, but if you have a friend who can get you some online codes for free, then you should totally do it. It's really fun. And don't order anything with kale unless you are actually going to eat it, unlike me. listening to Therese Talk, a production of Family Life. I'm your host, Therese Main. Our guest this episode is a mom who shares her life with millions of people. You might know Esther Anderson from the story of this life. Their Facebook page says the realities of parenting and family life, the good, the bad, and everything in between because... That's just life. So right now they're refurbing an old farmhouse. They're raising three daughters. And don't forget about the chickens. Esther, welcome. Thanks for having me. Now, you guys ended up in this part of the world because of family. And you had to leave much warmer climates <laughs> to get here. Uh, how does that kind of settle with you, especially this time of year, like the coldest part of winter? Oh, I I just want to move back to Florida. This is what I want to do. <laughs> I told, I actually just sent, we have a family message on uh, Facebook. And just recently, I, I sent my family a message and I said, I hope you all know how much I love you because you are the reason that we are here and you are the only reason that we are living here in the cold. And how is it that you get through that season? Because for a lot of people, especially up here, it's like, uh, you know, that kind of um, that winter depression sits in, your vitamin D plummets and you're here for family. So how does that spirit of family kind of get you through those months? Um, we see our family a lot and we do lots of really fun things together. My girls have lots of cousins, and so we do lots of fun stuff. You know, we do festive things. We go get our Christmas trees together, and um, we try to make it as as festive as possible and just spending time with our family. Like the other night, my husband and I uh, saw three family members in one day, and as we were pulling out of my brother's house, I told Thad, I said, this is why we're here. This is why we deal with the cold, because we get to see family. We get to be around them. We Our kids get to grow up with their kids, and they get to see their grandparents, which is something I didn't have. I didn't have grandparents growing up. I mean, I did, but they most of them had passed away, and so I didn't get to experience that um, sweet relationship. And so seeing that happen with our kids is really very special. The other thing that we do um, – pretty much every winter is I escape Rochester and I go back to the warmer weather and I go visit my friends in Florida. And since we moved around Florida so much and so many different places in Florida, I have friends all over the place. So we go to Florida, we go to Texas. I, I bail on the cold. Your biggest video on YouTube is sleeping with a baby. It's gotten over 25 million views, which is crazy. <laughs> Does it sometimes though kind of freak you out a little bit that your kids have been seen by that many people? Or maybe it's just like five people watching it like over and over and over again. I'm not sure. Yeah, probably, it's probably actually a bunch of like 11 year old kids sitting behind their, you know, tablets hitting replay or like I sometimes I envision like a toddler just sitting there and just hitting the button over and over because my kids do that too sometimes. Um, yeah, it's a little bit weird. Um, it's, it's not as weird anymore, I think, as what it was initially when we first started um, five years ago. To us, it's kind of become our, our new mission and it's kind of become our new life that this is what we do and we put our life out there so that we can be an encouragement and we can um, uplift other families out there. It is a little bit weird and now, you know, I think just because our videos have gone out so far, you know, we'll have people recognize us when we're out. And I think that's weirder. That That's where it gets weird because then it's like they know about us and our family and they'll say, oh, well, how's how's Elia doing? I saw she had her first day of school. And it's like, oh, awesome. What's your name? You know, so but it's really fun. We get to meet people. And so, yeah, it's it's definitely it's a little bit strange. But at the same time, you know, I think it's it's been really good for the kids, too. Let's talk a little yeah. bit about having Three little girls, because girls, especially, I think, in this social media heavy world, have so many pressures on them to look a certain way and be a certain way and present themselves a certain way. Have you and Thad thought anything about uh, kind of how you want to train them into how to deal with that new reality? That's one of those things that um, really strikes a chord with me. Um because I, I feel like, um, like you said, it's, it's a hard world that girls are living in these days where um, they, everywhere they see on YouTube, on TV, you know, even among their friends, it, you go to Target now and you see all the clothes that everything is about the way you look. And that's just humanity. I feel like that's, that's 
how we work as people is we want to look nice. And for girls, I know, especially that's the thing. Um, and so that and I have really tried hard from the very beginning to really push that, you know, your, your value comes from within, it comes from inside, your value comes from who you are in Christ. We're always telling the girls, you're beautiful because of who you are inside. And it's because you're kind, it's because you're selfless. And we literally probably repeat some of these things to them, at least weekly to be just constantly reminding them, find your value in, in people, find your value in who you are as a person. And most of all, most importantly, find your value in Christ and, you know, put your identity in him because all these other things, you know, the Jojo bows, they're all, that's going to go out of fashion in a little while. And they're all going to be like, mom, I can't believe you let me wear those things, you know? So (laughs) I think for every parent, it's a struggle to to just be constantly reminding their children, you know, like you're, you're loved and you're beautiful, not because of what you look like on the outside. And one of the other things that we, we really stress too, in um, just how we, we reward them. We will, we try at least we, we're not perfect at this. We try to reward them not for the things that they do and how they look, but for character traits. Let's talk a little bit about haters. There's no way that you can have two and a half million Facebook followers and not have someone say something that just isn't nice. So how do you respond to that, both publicly and both on the inside, you know, with finding your identity in Christ and not worrying about what people think? Um, Well, um, we've had some, we, we haven't had very many haters actually. Um, we had more in the beginning, I think as we were kind of building up who we were. Um, I think my favorite story was, (laughs) I'm not going to say any names. There was a lady, um, I had posted a picture. It wasn't even a picture, um, of one of my own children. A friend had, um, her daughter had eaten little bites out of a hot dog all the way down the top of the hot dog. And I thought it was hilarious because that's a classic toddler thing to do to just take little bites out of something, but to not actually eat the whole thing and then be done with it, you know? And so I took a picture, I posted it and the comments were hilarious. You know, everybody was laughing and they, Oh yeah, my kids do the same thing. And there was one lady that got on there and she was like, I can't believe that you feed your kids those processed meat tubes. And she got absolutely shredded from people who had been following us for a while, you know, who, and they were like, well, you know, it's not your job to judge what (laughs) Esther feeds her kids. And, um, it turned into a big thing. She, she was responding and she was upset and other people were jumping in and, um, she, uh, uh, people were logging on there. They were getting onto her personal Facebook and saying, well, we saw that you said this, and well, how do you explain that? And it was really intense. And that and I, you know, some of it was kind of funny, and some of it we were kind of like, oh man, like people get serious on here. And like, this is, it was just a picture of a hot dog. Settle down, people. Generally, um, our followers um, will often get on and say, well, you know, if you don't like this family, or you don't like what they're doing, or you don't like what they're teaching their children, or you don't like that they're telling their kids about God, well, don't follow them is basically the response that we've seen. I generally stay out of it. Um, unless we feel, uh, like we have somehow said something that could be offensive. Um, in which case we'll get on and and we'll say something. Um, there was one time I posted a video that I think was insensitive. It was, um, not on purpose, but it was definitely insensitive. And, um, I got on and I apologized and I said, I'm really sorry. I wasn't thinking about that when I posted it. Um, and she was really sweet. She, the girl who had written me, she wrote back and she was like, oh, that was really, you know, thank you for responding. It, you know, makes me care that you wrote back to me and we took the video off. And so, yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, it's it, like, what would you do if you had, I, I tell myself, if I had this person standing right in front of me, you know, what would I say? How would I respond? So much of social media is just people say anything because they're braver behind a computer screen. And so, you know, I try to just be gracious. And a lot of times when I'm gracious, I notice that the haters will write back and say, Oh, I'm really sorry. You know, I didn't mean it like that. And so yeah, I I think the key is just to be gracious in in how you respond. Let's talk about the Jesus factor, because you have kind of a big audience. How do you talk about your faith in a way that is real and genuine? 
uh, but doesn't turn people away. And there's kind of that fine line, you know, that line between truth and grace. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, when we first started this channel, um, you know, five years ago, Thad and I sat down and we said, you know, okay, is this something we want to do? Um, we said, all right, this is going to be kind of like a mission field for us. Um, I grew up overseas. Uh, my parents were missionaries in Papua New Guinea and, um, I had always felt like I was called to be a missionary of sorts. And so we said, well, maybe this is it. And I think as time has gone on, it's kind of proven that that's the case. Um, we, um, I will generally, generally our faith comes out in just everyday moments. So for instance, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, okay. So here's an example for, um, Elia's first day of school. She had a first day of kindergarten and, um, I prayed over her that day. And so I just wrote out my prayer for her for that day and what I would be praying for her throughout the year and and have been. And I posted it along with a picture showing me, you know, giving her a hug and praying with her. And, um, you know, we have people respond to that and say, that's wonderful. Can I, you know, copy this prayer or like, what a sweet idea to pray with your daughter. And, and then we'll get people who will write us, you know, privately, they'll message us and say, you know, well, why do you pray like that? Why is it not a prayer like this? Or like, tell me more about this God that you can just pray so casually to. And so it's been really neat to be able to just use little pieces of our everyday life to be able to, you know, instill our faith onto social media out there into the world. And and some, and some days we're a little bit more, um, I don't know, outward with our faith than we are other days. But Um, you know, anytime if I have somebody message me privately and they ask about our faith, then I dive right on in. Can you imagine a day when one of your girls would say, you know what, I don't know if I want, you know, my videos and pictures out Mm -hmm. for the whole world. And how would you respond to that? And then also, like, do you think you'll still be doing this when you have three teenage girls? (laughs) Well, I can tell you one thing. If we were still doing it, if we are still doing this with three teenage girls, it's going to be a whole different kind of channel with a whole lot of emotion uh, and drama, I'm sure. Um, yes, no, we've talked about that at this point in our life. Um, we feel like, you know, the girls, the girls are obviously, they're totally fine with it. They really probably don't have much an idea of what's going on. We're very um, careful with what we do post about them. You know, we try not to post anything that would ever be shaming or, you know, anything like that in the future if they were to go back and, and see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'll it'll be up to them. It'll be their choice when they get to be older. And you know, if they say, Mom, I don't feel comfortable. I don't I don't want to be on the internet. Well, then guess what? They won't be on the internet, you know, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what will happen that the whole um, we're just kind of rolling with it as as life happens. And that's kind of you know, where we got the idea story of this life, because we, we, you know, you, we don't know what's going to happen with this life. I have no idea. I don't know if I'll be around in 10 years, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, thanks for letting us into your life. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having us around. You can follow Esther, Thad, their girls and the chickens all online by searching for the story of this life on Facebook. Thanks for listening to Therese Talk. Before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about what I've been reading in Scripture. I don't know if you're doing a Bible in a year kind of thing or anything like that. I struggle so much through some of the Old Testament books, you know, Exodus and Leviticus with all the rules and all the regulations. And every time I hear, you know, do this to be forgiven from that and do this to be forgiven from that, I just go, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Because of Jesus, we don't have to go through any of those rituals anymore. But there was something unusual with the priest that stuck out to me. Now, I've done the Bible in a year before, but for some reason, this kind of hit me now. The blood on the earlobes, the thumbs, and the toes for the priests uh, in order to be anointed. I guess you could say they would put some blood on their right ear, their right thumb, and their right toe. And I thought, that is weird. It was the right greater toe. That was the other thing. Like your big toe is your greater toe. So why is it those three places. I knew there was something significant. So I started digging and some theologians say that the ear symbolizes our ability to hear instruction from the word of God, you know, that 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 is how we get our way of living from the Lord. And so to anoint that 
would say, God, we want you over that. We want you to be the one that dictates what we hear and how we hear it and how we use it. So I thought that was cool. Why the thumb, though? Well, the thumb has to do with what we do with our hands, you know, our works. And when we are sanctified, when we have the blood of Jesus applied to our lives, we should use our hands to do the work of the kingdom, that we would be profitable for God with our actions. So that was kind of cool. Now, what about the big toe? <laughs> well, the big toe kind of indicates your ability to walk. Uh, if you've ever known somebody who's had to lose their big toe, you learn very quickly how much that has to do with balance, you know, and keeping you sure-footed. And as we walk through this life sure-footed, we want to make sure that God is ordering our steps by applying the blood, by applying Jesus' righteousness and forgiveness to the way we walk. We get to go places we never would have dreamed of. So if you're reading the Bible in a year like I am, well, just know that there are oftentimes messages hidden in those books that we'd like to just kind of go through real quick that God is saying, wait, slow down, stop. See what I'm trying to show you even in this book. You've been listening to Therese Talk. I'm your host, Therese Main. Thanks to our producer, Therese Main. Wait, that's me. Our editor, Therese Main. Okay, that's also me. You know how they do this thing at the end of the podcast? Yeah, we don't need to do any of that, right? Because really, we have God to thank for everything that you've heard on this podcast today. If you're interested in supporting the ministry that makes this podcast possible, find out more when you go to fln.org. And if you want more information about the things that we've talked about on this episode, visit the podcast page at fln.org slash podcast. Would you mind if I prayed with you real quick before we wrap up? God, thank you for everyone who's listening to this podcast. Father, I pray that they've been encouraged in the way that you want them to live. God, I just pray that my words have somehow been touched by your spirit and that they'll effectively reach hearts to bring joy and peace and forgiveness into people's lives. Lord, thank you for all the different ways that you give us to communicate. Thank you for the ministry of family life. God, I pray that you would bless each one listening, Lord, that they would truly know you in a deep, real way, and that they would be blessed as they go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.